For much of the Cold War, it fell upon NATO and the West to match wits against the latest Soviet main battle tank offering. At the end of the 1960s, the US Army had in its stable the capable M60 Patton MBT while the West Germans made use of their first post-World War II tank design, the excellent Leopard 1 MBT. However, it became apparent that, within time, upcoming Soviet tank designs would wield ever greater power to counter any interim Western proposal current available. The Soviet T-62 and its 115mm smoothbore main gun prompted the original M60 and Leopard 1 developments and, if the Cold War were ever to go hot, the land war would surely be run through West Germany and involve all of NATO's major players intent on stopping Soviet armor. Almost as soon as the M60 established a foothold in the U.S. Army inventory in the early to mid-1960s, the U.S. Army began looking at prospects for a next-generation MBT, joining forces with the like-minded West Germans in developing such a new vehicle to meet the future demands of each respective army. It was expected that the new endeavor would produce a viable end product in 1970. The resulting joint program therefore, became the MBT-70, a fiscally sound, technologically advanced combat tank with excellent performance, mobility, protection and firepower. As the program proved highly ambitious from the beginning, the endeavor was quickly fractured. There were already early disagreements on the selection of a main gun. The Americans favored the British L7 plus 105mm system as used on the M60 pattern while the West Germans were eager to field a new Remetal L44 plus 120mm gun to counter the expected Soviet 125mm guns. A consensus was then reached on an unproven but powerful 152mm main gun system that could also fire a short-ranged anti-tank missile. Program costs then ballooned, largely owed to the high degree of untested technology being applied to the new design. This prompted the Germans to leave the program in 1969 while also drawing the ire of the American Congress who were already dealing with a costly war in Vietnam. With the Germans gone, the Americans attempted to go at it alone though, after a financial review of the program, the MBT-70 was officially cancelled outright by the overseeing U.S. Department of Defense, this occurring in January of 1970. In response, the U.S. Army attempted to sell Congress on a simplified version, the MBT-70 AV austere version, but this initiative lasted all but one year until its own cancellation in December of 1971. The U.S. Army then went to work on a lower-risk program which eventually became the excellent M1 Abrams main battle tank. At the same time, West Germany was already at work on a new indigenous design all their own to improve upon the aging Leopard 1 series. Finally, to the rather unimaginative name of Leopard 2 assigned in 1971. Back in September of 1977, satisfied with the prototype development and subsequent evaluations, the West German Army ordered their first serial production batch of Leopard 2 tanks to number 1,800 examples over five batches. The first vehicles began deliveries to West German units in 1979 and several other interested European parties soon joined in its purchase, this to include the Netherlands and Switzerland. The Dutch Army became the first foreign customer of the excellent Leopard 2 and placed an order of 445 strong in 1979. This was followed by the Swiss with an order for 380, 345 of these to be locally produced under license and the rest coming from West Germany. The Dutch order was fulfilled in its entirety by the end of 1986. By any regard, the Leopard 2 followed conventional tank wisdom and learned values for the most part. It utilized a traditional design with a crew of four managing various positions about the vehicle. 
The driver sat front right in the forward hull with the remaining crew in the turret. This consisted of the gunner, tank commander and loader. The gunner was situated front right in the turret with the commander directly behind. The loader was set to the left side of the turret and managed the reloading functions. Ammunition was stored in the turret bustle as well as in the hull. Outwardly, the Leopard 2 exhibited modern clean lines and a low profile. Early production forms sported a turret with slab sides while later versions operated with the sleek a sharper design which improved ballistics protection. The turret was set at the middle of the hull roof with a noticeable overhang of the bustle. The 120mm main gun, in turn, overhung front of the hull. Smoke grenade discharges were present along the turret sides in banks numbering 8 to each turret side. The hull was largely flat with slab sides. The glassy plate was well sloped while the upper portions of the tracks were protected in thin skirt armor plates. The engine and transmission was set to a rear compartment in a traditional fitting. Each track consisted of seven double-tired road wheels to a side with the drive sprocket at the rear and the track idler at the front. NBC protection was standard as was night vision equipment, passive for the commander, gunner and driver positions. A fire control computer and laser range finder were standard from the first production model on. The new Leopard 2 A5 production variant more drastically changed the Leopard 2 line than any other variant before it for it brought about a new, well-sloped, turret arrowhead design that has since become the identifiable hallmark of the Leopard 2 family. This adds basic protection against kinetic and chemical-based rounds. Add-on armor only added to the crew's protection, particularly on the side skirt facings. The turret was now all electrically driven which has made it more responsive and efficient in the heat of battle while the gun breech region was reworked to accept heftier projectile types. A newer laser range finding system has increased first hit probability. A rear mounted camera has improved rearward driving for the driver while the commander's station welcomed a thermal imaging site. The Leopard 2 A5 appeared in 1998 while, that same year, Krauss Maffei became Krauss Maffei Wegman. The Pinnacle Leopard 2 development may well be the latest offering in the Leopard 2 A7 as unveiled in 2010. This version has been seen with improved RPG protection as well as modular armor support. Included in this version is a remote-controlled weapons station which allows for firing of the turret roof machine gun without exposing the crew to battlefield dangers. The German army has already moved to upgrade their existing Leopard 2A6 fleet to the new Leopard 2A7 standard and these have also been offered to Saudi Arabia in a deal currently blocked by political wrangling at home. All of the latest Leopard 2 tanks utilized the same MTU MB873 car 501 series 12-cylinder diesel twin-turbocharged engine of 1,479 horsepower. This is tied to a Renk HSW L354 series hydromechanical transmission system featuring four forward and two reverse speeds. The automatic transmission helps combat driver fatigue over long distances, particularly when going cross-country. The vehicles are suspended upon a torsion bar spring suspension system utilizing hydraulic dampeners. While the Leopard 2 A4 yields an operational weight of 55 tons, the Leopard 2 A6 tops 60 tons. Top road speed is 45 miles per hour with an operational range equal to 340 miles making her one of the fastest MBTs in the world today. Main armament is the exceptional 120mm Rhine Metal L55 series smooth bore main gun to which 42 projectiles of 120mm ammunition are stored aboard. The main gun is fully stabilized along both axis and can fire heat and APFSDSD projectiles as needed. The APFSDSD projectile features a dense tungsten allow core and 
fired at 5,413 feet per second, can defeat heavy class tank armor at range. Being stabilized, the main gun can engage and fire on targets at range while on the move, even over uneven terrain. Reloading of the main gun is accomplished by the loader crew member that is assisted by a semi-automatic mechanism. The Leopard's use of a smooth bore 120mm main gun made her the first Western tank to field an unrifled barrel. The smooth bore was, in fact, pioneered in the Soviet T-62 series, though with much research. Secondary armament is supplied by a coaxial 7.62mm MG3A1 machine gun and a turret roof mounted 7.62mm MG3A1 machine gun. Approximately 4,750 rounds of 7.62mm ammunition can be carried. The machine guns are used when the target does not require the overkill, anti-armor penetration properties of the main gun. The Leopard 2 was operationally fielded for the first time in the Kosovo War as part of the peacekeeping force. Similarly, it has been utilized in the war in Afghanistan following the US invasion of the country after 9-11. While not as combat tested as some of her contemporaries, the Leopard 2 combines a perfect blend of mobility, firepower and protection to see her crew through. The Leopard 2 joined the American M1 Abrams and British Challenger 2 as some of the finest examples of Western tanks anywhere in the world.